Steel alloys are an extremely versatile group of materials. Chief among the sources of this versatility is the ability to control the microstructure of components through judicious heat treatment. Not all alloys are easily hardened by heat treatment, so hardenability is a basic property of a ferrous alloy which should be characterized. In this lab, we will be working with four different kinds of steel. 4140, 8620, 1045, and 1018. Each one of these specimens have distinct carbon content and additives, making them have slightly different properties. The main property covered here is hardenability, or the depth at which a material can be hardened by heat treatment. Not to confuse it with the hardness, which is the resistance to the formation or indention of a material. Let's see how we can know the amount of carbon in steel. As you can see, we have two main numbers that make up the name of the steel. The first two digits correspond to the family of steels, which basically can tell us what other elements are included in the alloy. You can see that for 4140, we have all of these elements present as shown on the table. The second pair of digits tells you the carbon content by weight percent present. In this case, steel 4140 has 0.40 weight percent of carbon in the iron. Can you now identify how much carbon is present in each of the specimens for this lab? As you may know, steels can have different crystal structures. BCC and MCC are the most common. While some of these structures can be found naturally, we can manipulate the alloy to give us the structure we need. One way to do that is by heat treating the steel. In order to determine what structure we can obtain, we need to look at the phase diagram for the material. A phase diagram is a graph that tells you the composition of the materials present in a mixture and the phases that make it up. In this phase diagram for steel, it can be observed that depending on the carbon content and temperatures of steel, different crystal structures can be obtained. For example, the specimens we have at room temperature most likely have a BCC structure before heating. After heating beyond the austenitizing temperature, we can transform the structure to FCC, thus forming the austenite present in the steel. The cooling rate also has an effect on the structure of metals. As the metals cool down, the grains have time to grow and reform into different structures. Quenching is the process of quickly cooling down a metal, usually in water, oil, sand, etc., after heating up. The faster you cool, the less time the grains have to change, and thus you can keep the structure form during the heat treatment. In steels, when the austenite structure is quenched, it is transformed into martensite a harder crystal structure. In specimens where the cooling rate varies across the length, you can expect them to have different hardness values across the region. The Jomini N quench test is commonly used to characterize the fundamental hardenability of alloys. The test uses N quenching, where water is only applied to the very end of a cylinder to produce a continuously decreasing quench rate along the length of the cylinder. Very near the end, the material will experience nearly instantaneous quenching and will thus have the maximum achievable hardness. Material along the cylinder will cool more slowly with increasing distance from the end and will thus be progressively softer. The objective for this lab is to produce hardenability curves for various alloys and to describe the effects that carbon contents has on its hardenability. Let's look into the procedures for this lab. Refer first to the ASCM standard for the details on the procedures regarding the water flow rates, heating times, grinding, harness testing, etc. The first step is to preheat the furnace at the corresponding alternating temperature. This will depend on the carbon content of the material. For a steel with less than 0.25% carbon, the temperature will be 925 Celsius. For a carbon content between 0.25 and 0.36 will be 870 Celsius, and above 0.36 it will be 840 Celsius. 
as you can see, the more carbon content is present, the less heat is required to austenitize the steel. Once the furnace has reached the desired temperature, place the specimen inside and let it heat up for about 30 to 40 minutes. Just before it is time to remove the steel from the furnace, open the water in the sink for the Jomini test. Make sure the height of the column of water is approximately 2.5 inches according to the ASTM standard follow. Carefully remove the specimen from the furnace using the correct heat protective equipment and place it in the fixture in the sink above the running flow of water. Notice the color that the specimen has as it comes out of the furnace. The color of the steel can be used as an indicator of how hot it is. Pay close attention at the color gradient formed from the cooling end to the hot end of the specimen. The cooler end has turned gray almost immediately, while the rest is still a shade of red and slowly changing. Although the steel may seem gray as before, it may still be in the hundreds of degrees in temperature. So always follow the necessary precautions when handling. The grains that were quenched were transformed into martensite, while the rest of the grain slowly being cooled will recrystallize back to ferrite plus any other phases that might be present in the steel. Once the specimen is cool to touch, remove it from the sink and cut the top part of it using the wet saw. After cutting, grind a lengthwise flat strip of about 0.25 inches according to the equation given in the manual. It is in this flat area where you will do a Rockwell hardness test along the length of it in specified increments. Using this data, you'll be able to recreate the hardenability curves for each one of the specimens given.